This morning now we turn to scripture that comes to us from uh, the letter to the Ephesians. And doing a little research on Ephesians this week, it appears from what scholars tell us that this letter was most likely intended to be what they call the circular, uh, a circulating letter. There's nothing too much in this letter that actually applies to one particular church, but rather to churches everywhere in that day. And I think that's so meaningful for us this morning, September 12th, 2021, to know that this letter, this letter was actually written to us. So I read to you now from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. So then, remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth, who would be us actually, called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. That is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity, in the place of two, thus making peace. And might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through us. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who are far off and peace to those who are near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, thank you for grace and peace and power and reconciliation that has come to us through Christ. Oh, help us take that in this morning. This food for our journey. Both in scripture and in the sacrament. Fill us with your way. Amen. Powerful words for this morning. Verse 14, for he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one. And has broken down the dividing wall, the hostility between us. When this letter was written, it was primarily referring to Gentile Christians and Jewish Christians. And the division uh, that existed between those early believers. But as I said, it's a living word, right? That's what we always say about scripture, about the Bible. It's a living word, which means it speaks to us today. Today. Jesus Christ creating one humanity in the place of two, thus making peace. So then you're no longer strangers and aliens, but you're citizens. Citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. In this moment, in this day, this desire that we have to have the dividing walls broken down, to have the hostility that exists between us in so many ways in our nation, in our community, in our world, to, to have those broken down, those hostilities, to rebuild, to recognize one another as each of us, all of us, citizens of the kingdom of God. 
to know Jesus Christ in such a way that we know this oneness in him. And that this new humanity means we look at one another as children of God, as brothers, sisters, as siblings, as created equal, all one in Christ. There is so much, and this weekend's remembrance has truly reminded us, there is so much hostility in our world. So many walls, so much brokenness. We can list all the divides, the political divide, the social divide, the religious divide, the violence in the world. We've all been talking about the divisions just based on mask wearing and schools and so much hostility that exists. Can we confront this? Can in our very selves, can our faith in Jesus Christ go so deep that we can exist with one another, that we can speak truth without hostility? In this memory, in this remembering this weekend of 9-11, right? The heightened fear is there again, I think, as we remember those attacks that appeared to so many of us, probably all of us, to come out of nowhere. But can we reclaim another memory from that time that will take us to a deeper place? On Friday, Bishop Michael Curry, the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church, posted this following statement. As followers of Jesus, with our siblings and other faith traditions, we place great value on the act of remembrance. As we, as we reflect on the solemn anniversary of September 11, 2001, we remember many loved ones lost and first responders who put their lives at risk, modeling the sacrificial love of Jesus who said, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. While 20 years have passed, I also want us to pause and remember the days that followed these tragic events. There was a moment in the aftermath when people came together. We were praying and grieving and also working together. Because in that moment, however fleeting it was, we knew with immediacy and vulnerability that we need God and we need one another. Memories of that tender cooperation, of love for each other as neighbors, serve as guiding lights for the present. I'm going to read that line again. Memories of that tender cooperation, of love for each other as neighbors, serve as a guiding light for the present. Amidst the ongoing pandemic and natural disasters that have taken so many lives and pushed first responders to their limits, and amidst a worldwide reckoning with the sin of racism, we're called to become the beloved community whose way of life is the way of Jesus and his way of love. We remember that tender cooperation. And we seek again to love one another as Christ loved us, to be willing to lay down one's life for one's friends, to love one's enemies, and to see each other as an image of God. For he is our peace, and in his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is hostility between us. There are times when words, when words can't say enough or say it all. And so we turn to ritual. You know, even that's what we've experienced, I think, this weekend. A, a certain ritual. I was um, listening to this story about uh, firefighters and some of our young people, including one of our, our own, uh, Luca Dorenzo, running up and down the, sta the, the um, stadium stairs hundred times to remember what it took for the firefighters and the people to save those. And many of them lost their lives. We, we look to rituals to remind us, songs and photos and prayers. This morning, we claim the ritual of the sacrament of Holy Communion that roots us again, that plants us deep in the love of God 
and in Christ's gift to us. So I just want to share with you as, you as we prepare to sing and then receive communion, part of our communion ritual. The words, holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the water and the spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. <laughs>